Hello everybody. Broadcasting today from Birmingham, Alabama. This is uh, conference day today and tomorrow for my husband. We are speaking at a conference and having a great time. Welcome those of you that are joining. Glad to have you on and I want to say welcome to our replay viewers. Definitely. Really enjoy having all of you uh, join us today. So basically, today I'm scoping from Birmingham. Um, last week it was Dallas. In a couple weeks here, it will be Paris and then London. So I'll still try and keep track of all of you and I will scope from there. So, hi Grace, how are you? Man, great to see you guys. It's just fun to be here. I'm Gail Anderson and this is Mentoring Moments for Moms. Today, what I want to talk a little bit about is almost a continuation of last week. Last week we talked about eating out with your kids and I decided, okay, we could talk a little bit about manners. So I will hit just a few basic manners today, but I want to talk in general about having family meals at home. It is so important, I believe, on a daily basis for your family to gather at the table. Thank you for those hearts. If you're enjoying what I'm saying, please Give me some hearts on the screen. And if you want to share this with anybody, swipe to the right and you'll be able to share this broadcast with other people. So why have a meal together with your family? You know, I believe that meal time is not just for fueling your body. It is really an important time to build relationships in the family. It's really more about talking and visiting with each other than it is about actually eating. It builds that togetherness, it builds that unity, and it is just a culture building experience. It's part of what I say helps your kids to feel that they are part of something bigger than themselves, that they're part of a team, they're part of something that, that they can identify with. And you know what? When they get to teenage age, they definitely want to find some kind of group that they belong to. And I think it's great to have that be the family unit rather than looking out and trying to find that group with their peers. So often in today's world, we all have such crazy schedules. We have so much going on that people just eat and run in the family, especially if they're older. But I believe sitting down to the family table together is important. Now, whether that be at breakfast or at dinner, most generally it won't happen at lunch, but happening at breakfast or at dinner is a great time for everybody to just sit down and have a chance to be together. Because parenting is not just about my relationship with my kids, it's also to develop those relationships between siblings so they can build an appreciation, a respect, have a listening ear for their siblings. It's really a neat thing to do and that comes at home. So. I'm going to go through these manners real quick and then we'll talk about a couple of other things. Um, these are just real down and dirty basic manners. Now you can actually get way developed on this and you may have things that are much more important to you to be followed at the table, but I'm going to be very general because I don't want to put some kind of high expectations on manners you need to teach your children. So first of all, ask for food to be passed. Simple. If food's not on your plate, you need it, you ask, you don't reach. Um, before you eat, you put your napkin in your lap. Hey moms, that means we need to be setting a napkin at their place so that they use it. Very good. Thank you. Nice to see you, Rebecca. Um, next of all, don't talk with your mouth full. <laughs> very good, very general, basic manner to teach your kids. We're just talking about teaching manners at the table with our kids and basically teaching them at home so that when, when we go out to eat somewhere, they have the basics down. Wait for your turn to talk. Now in the Anderson family, I used to have something to pass around and the person with that, which I call the gavel, even though it wasn't a gavel, would be the one who was talking. We had several in the family who were very verbal, liked talking a lot, and they could just monopolize the conversation at dinner. But I think it's important for every person to be able to talk, mom, dad, and every single child. So we would go around the table and give everybody a chance to share their things for the day. Something funny, something really great that happened, just to encourage that conversation and encourage everybody to be able to share. So a skill that everybody else has to do, has to develop, is learning. Thank you. I believe it's a good idea. I saw it working with my own kids and it actually helped to bring out those that weren't that verbal. So 
Listening to others while they're talking is another skill we want to develop while they're going around the table. Sometimes we even had a night where, I mean, all my kids had a day. I had five kids, five days of the week. So Monday was for the firstborn, Tuesday was for the secondborn, Wednesday was for the third, Thursday and Friday for the fourth and fifth. And we did all kinds of things with that. We can talk about that later, but on that day, if we decided we were gonna have this compliment blast, we would do it to the person whose day it was. Okay, it's Tuesday, so that means everybody's gonna say something great about Jared. So we go around the table and talk about what we like about Jared. What a confidence builder. And to hear that from his siblings as well as his parents, it's just really fun. Okay, so besides listening at the table, we wanna to ask to be excused. I think that is an extremely important thing. And I'll explain a little bit more about that, especially with my grandkids. And then clear your plate. Everybody should have some kind of help in cleaning up. And you know, as kids are old enough and can put their um, dishes up on the counter or even rinse them, that is wonderful. Now, the first thing I didn't talk about, which I would say goes without saying, is no phones at the table. Back when my kids were younger, we didn't have cell phones, but it was nobody's going to answer the phone during dinner. That is a sacred time. Even if it's only a 30 minute time that we're at the table together, we can put away everything else that would distract us. Hey, I thought that was you, I just wasn't sure. I'm saying your name, Taryn, I hope that's right. Taryn, we actually got to speak at the art conference today about family, uh, building strong families, and it was fantastic. You weren't there, oh, you might have listened, okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go through these manners again in case anybody missed them. Ask for food to be passed. Put your napkin in your lap before starting to eat. Don't talk with your mouth full. Cool. Wait for your turn to talk. <laughs> Listen to others as they are sharing. Ask to be excused and clear your plate. Again, there's a lot more technical manners we can get into, but I'm talking about the basics that you can start even at a young age. Then as kids get older, you, oh, you wanna teach them about double dipping and different things like that, but we're just gonna stay with the basics today. Now with my grandkids, I wanted to find a very easy way to have all of them participate at the table in the whole process of coming to the table, having conversation and not leaving to be excused. So what I did was I started, I'm always starting these funny, funny little chants. We called it pray, stay, and excuse, excuse, a, just so it would rhyme. We'll say that's French though. The pray part was everyone comes to the table, but no one eats until we officially have a start to the meal. And that's what prayer was, the official start to the meal. Then the next part was stay. That means, hey, we are not just here to eat and then get up and run. We are here to have conversation together, to talk, to build each other up, and to grow. And the last part was excuse, -a, to ask to be excused, and then take your plate up to the sink. And those were some really easy ways we started with our kids, and especially now with the grandkids, with those three, pray, stay, and excuse. -a. So do make an effort to have family meals together. It's a wonderful time to build your team, to build unity within that family, and it's just fun. But I know in today's world it takes a decision that with everything going on, you have to decide this is most important. So everybody, this is Gail Anderson, Mentoring Moments for Moms. Couple reminders, if you're looking for my email, it will be in the profile on my Twitter account. Um, you can also get a hold of me through our website. The link in that is um, in my profile here on Periscope. Also, you can catch all my scopes that I've done. They are being saved on catch.me, and that link as well is in the profile on Periscope. So, sorry this had to be um, at such an odd time. I know you're probably all eating dinner, so hopefully you're watching and catching up on this via replay. Hi, Rebecca, nice to have you joining. I'm sorry, I'm almost signing off. I'm in Birmingham tonight and uh, just getting ready to go back to a conference. But uh, wonderful to see all of you and to connect with all of you. And I should be seeing you tomorrow. So have an awesome night. And again, enjoy the adventure of motherhood. See you later.